Hello and welcome to this film which is all about resonance and delocalization. This is the last thing we have to deal with in the bonding topic, in the high level bonding topic of the IB course. Um, well done I suppose if you've made it to this point and uh, you're feeling confident with everything you've done. Um, this film we're kind of going to deal with the principles involved here rather than looking at any examples. So the last film of this series will be the next one where we look at a few examples of where we can put resonance and delocalization into practice. But here we're kind of going to introduce the idea that um, bond lengths, um, by looking at the bond lengths in a molecule, we can we get some evidence for what type of um, bonds there are in a molecule and therefore where the electrons are in which bonds. And we can also understand that, um, hopefully, that by representing um, molecules using things called resonance forms, we can actually show how electrons are delocalizing in those molecules. Anyway, here's a really famous example for, for showing this principle. Okay, This is the benzene molecule. Now, lots and lots of studies have been done on the benzene molecule, and in fact, the kind of the stories of, um, of how the structure of benzene was first proposed by a chap called Kekulé who was having a bad dream or something by the fire probably after he'd had a bit too much to drink because he couldn't they didn't think he was ever going to get the structure or something along those lines so we've ended up with this um, this uh, ring of carbons joined together um, by single and double bonds okay so this is the benzene molecule it's got the formula C6H6 okay and having studied the benzene molecule quite a lot um, and other molecules that have single and double carbon-carbon uh, bonds. We've discovered that the single carbon-to-carbon -carbon bond length is on average about 154 picometers, picometers being 10 to the minus 12 meters. And the average carbon-carbon double bond length is about 134 picometers. So again, there's this idea that the stronger a bond is, a double bond is stronger than a single bond, the shorter it will be. We touched on this in the film about hydrogen bonding. Okay, but if we measure the bonds in benzene, not only do we discover they're all the same, but we discover that the actual bond length between carbons is about 140 picometers, so somewhere between these two. Okay, now that would suggest that this way of representing benzene with alternating single and double bonds can't really, although it might work as a Lewis diagram, it can't really give us an accurate reflection of the true situation because this would mean there'd be all different length bonds and the, the hexagon would be kind of lopsided, whereas it's not. We discover that it's a very regular hexagon and all the bonds are the same length and that they're somewhere between these two. So how can we explain that? Well, if you're drawing a Lewis diagram for benzene, you might end up drawing this one, but you might end up drawing that one. And I suppose you could say that there's no, nothing actually different about these two diagrams. They're just showing one molecule that's been flipped around. But if we're saying that this molecule hasn't been flipped around, then what we're saying by drawing these two diagrams is that the double bonds could be in these three positions here, or they could be in those three positions there, and the electrons could move around to change where those double bonds are. Okay? And the fact that we can draw these two equivalent forms of the molecule, that both work as Lewis diagrams, um, means that we can go some way to explaining that the electrons are kind of flitting between these two. These are called resonance forms, and this double-headed arrow is called a resonance arrow. So whenever we're drawing resonance forms, we try and draw a resonance arrow between them to show that there are different ways of drawing the same molecule that basically just depend on the electrons being in different places. It's not quite right to think that the molecule spends as much time like this as it does like that. It's actually what we end up seeing is that the true structure is somewhere between these two, where each one of these bonds is kind of like a one and a half bond. So rather than being a double bond or a single bond, it's been, each bond is kind of like a one and a half bond. And benzene is often drawn like this to reflect that. Okay, so this is showing that the electrons have delocalized. They've kind of spread round the ring. Rather than being in one, in three particular places, the double bonds are kind of spread round the molecule and forming kind of partial bonds. 
Okay, so this, these are resonance structures, and these resonance structures, the kind of the I suppose the average of these resonance structures is showing where the electrons can move to, or where they can delocalize to. So the key points that we've looked at so far here, and we're going to go into examples of where we can see delocalization and how we can represent this using uh, resonance in resonance forms in the next film. Key points from this film are that resonance structures are just different ways of drawing the same molecule, i.e. you can draw more than one Lewis structure, and these Lewis structures have to make sense, okay? You can't just draw bonkers Lewis structures and say that there are resonance forms of a molecule. They have to make sense, okay? You have to have the right number of pairs of electrons around things. Delocalized electrons are ones which we say are not confined to one particular bond. Okay, so instead of forming a double bond here and a single bond somewhere else, the electrons are kind of forming a mixture of the two types of bonds everywhere, I suppose you could say. In other words, they're free to roam between a number of different atoms instead of just being stuck between two atoms. And delocalization will give rise to bonds that are kind of halfway houses between single and double bonds, for example. Okay, so they're the key points from this film, and we'll have, as I say, we'll have a look at some examples in the next film. But hopefully by now that we're at the end of this film, you understand that this idea that electrons aren't confined to one particular bond is something that we came up with by looking at bond lengths and seeing what that told us about the type of bonding in a molecule, and that by using resonance forms or these alternative uh, Lewis diagrams from molecule, we can show where it is that the electrons are able to move to. As usual, uh, for the second last time in this topic, if you've got any questions or comments, please feel free to post them on YouTube or to come and ask me.